Thanks for joining us today at Lighthouse Outreach Ministries. We're lighting the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, listen today as Pastor Green shares some biblical truths that will shine upon the true light, Jesus Christ. The Principles of Spiritual Growth. And I want you to start out with what he tells us to do that I've already read in Hebrews 12. He says in verse 1, Seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us, everybody say let us, lay aside every weight. What kind of weights do you have on you today? What kind of burdens do you have on you today? Those you have to lay aside. Lay them aside. It almost says... Uh, just cast your cares on the Lord because the Lord cares for you. Those weights of the world, the weights, the worry, the fear, the doubt, the unbelief, the strife, all those things of the world, they will weight you down and you're to lay them aside and the sin. He's talking to Christians. Lay aside the sin. That does so easily beset us. So he shows us two things that easily besets us. Weights and sin. They will set us off course. So those are things you need to stay free from. Every day, cast your cares on the Lord. Lay aside your weights. Now how do we do that? In everything, by prayer and petition... Present your request to God. So, the way we lay aside weights is to pray about them. Take them to the Lord in prayer and give them to the Lord. And when you finish giving them to the Lord, don't take them back. Say, Lord, I give it to you and now I thank you, you've got it. You end with thanksgiving. That's Philippians 4. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all your understanding will put a garrison over your heart and over your mind in Christ Jesus. That's how we keep our mind protected. That's part of the weapon of our warfare. It's our helmet of salvation. It protects this. It's our breastplate of righteousness. Come on, when you pray about something rather than worry about something and you give it to God and you give him thanks and you leave it with God, you just put your helmet on and your breastplate on. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we're to do that, and we're to look to Jesus. Stop looking at your problem. Stop looking at the things that are offsetting you. See, we magnify whatever we look at. We magnify whatever we look at. If you look to Jesus, he's magnified. If you look to your problem, it's magnified. And when you talk about it all the time, it's magnified even more. Prayer changes things, whereas talking about things don't generally change anything. Worry sure don't change anything. Worry's like a rocking chair. It'll give you something to do but get you nowhere. Well, I'm just worried to death about so-and-so. You ever hear people say, I'm worried to death? That is literally what they mean. Worry will cause you to die prematurely. There's some people who have stomach issues because they worry too much. It'll cause sickness in the physical body. Worry will. And the most important thing we know about worry is it's a sin. No wonder the Word of God says lay aside the weights and the sin that so easily sets you off track. It'll get you off course. So I pray, now look to Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen? So just keep your eyes on Jesus. This is what the Word tells us we're to do. Now, he says we are to put off 
those two things. Put off weight, weights, put off sin. Put those off. Now, I want to ask you, if you will, to turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to look at verses 1 through 6. And then we're going to read verses 17 through 21. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, Paul said, I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now, he's already told us how to walk worthy of your calling with lowliness, with meekness, with patience. And forbear one another in love. And our endeavor is to keep unity. God hates division, especially among his family. Especially among the children of God. We know we're not of the world. But as children of God, we all are to endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit. In the bond of peace. He wants us to be in unity and in peace with each other. And we're to try to work toward that. There is one body. One spirit. Even as you are called in one hope of your calling. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all. Who is above all of us through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And I want to skip down now to verse 17. We're going to read 17 through 21. And we may read 22. This I say and testify in the Lord that you henceforth, that means from this time forth, walk not as other Gentiles. Gentiles are the heathen people, the heathen nations. We were our Gentiles, but we're no longer walking as Gentiles. We're not Jews, we're Gentiles. All the nations that were not Jews are Gentiles, Gentile nations. That's us. But we're not to walk as Gentiles anymore in the vanity of our mind. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance, look at that word, ignorance that is in them because of the blindness, blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. But you... You have not so learned Christ this way. This is not how we've learned to live and how Christ would have us to live, is it? We're not to live that way. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, and this is the important part, put off, that you put off Concerning the former conversation of the old man. So put off the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you, here's the other, put on the new man. So here we see, put off the old man. With its deceitful lust, it's corrupt. 
and put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Every day we're to get up and put on Christ. Every morning when you get up, do you put on your clothes? Do you go to your closet? Maybe you take off your pajamas if you wear pajamas. <laughs> Maybe everybody wears pajamas. And you decide what you're going to wear for the day. We all probably got up this morning and we decided what we was going to wear to church. And we went and we got those clothes and we put them on. You've got to do the same thing concerning your spirit man. Your spirit man needs to be clothed with righteousness and true holiness. Put on Christ. Put on the anointed one and his anointing. Just say it in your closet. I say it most of the time. Occasionally, I'll forget it. But when I'm getting dressed in the morning, that's the most common time for me to remember that I am to put on Christ. Put on love. And also put off the former things that were associated with the old man. How many of you know we're a new man? When we come into Christ, we are a new creation. Old things have passed away. The new has come. So you've got to, on purpose, do something. It don't just happen. Well, I thought it just happened. No, he tells you to do it. He tells me to do it. I'm to put off the old man. I'm to put on the new man. You're to put off the old man. You're to put on the new man. And now watch what in, is involved. This is going to tell us things we're to put off and things we're to put on. Let's see if we get it. Wherefore, put away lying. The first thing he mentions in putting off the old man is put away lying. Speak every man the truth with his neighbor. So you put off lying and you speak the truth. Next he says, for we are members of one another. Now he's talking to the church, the body of Christ. I'm not to lie to you, you're not to lie to me. We're to speak the truth with each other because we're members. We're members of the body of Christ. We're not supposed to be lying to each other, making excuses, being unfaithful to each other because we're one body. That does not make our Heavenly Father happy in any way. Now he says, be angry. You can be angry, but do not sin. Now it's not a sin to get angry. I want you to know that. It is not a sin. I get angry and so do you. How many of you never get angry in this house? We all do. We get angry about things. But the Bible says we can cross the line and sin if we don't practice self-control. And we've all done it. How many of you have ever been angry and it got out of control and you sinned? And then you had to go back and repent for sinning. It wasn't that it wasn't necessary to be angry. You should have been angry. But if we sin, we cross the line. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. The Bible says we give place to the devil. So it says neither give place to the devil. When you let your anger boil overnight, you're mad overnight about something, and you let it just brew and brew, and you mull over it, and you keep on living it, come on, the devil's going to come on and say, you, you know, you know you're angry. You know you need to get even. You know you need to get them back. You know you need to hurt them. You know they hurt you and you need to hurt them back. But you got to put the devil in his place and say, get behind me, Satan. I'm going to walk in love in Jesus' name. Come on, it's a choice we make all day, every day to walk in the love of God. Now he talks about stealing. He says, let him that stole. The, as an old man, you might have stole something. But now, as a new man, steal no more. Don't steal. But rather, labor. Labor means work. Work with your hands. Everybody, hold your hands up. Work with these. God gave us hands to work with. 
so that we don't have to steal. If you work, you don't have to steal because you'll have what you need. The thing which is good, work is good. Working with our hands, it's good. That he may have to give to him that's in need. Not only will God bless us through the work of our hands to meet our needs, which is the number one reason we work. People say, you like work? I say, not all the time. No, I just ain't crazy about going to work. But I know the Bible says I'm to work with my hands, and it's a good thing. So if God said it, then I'll do it. And that's why I work. That I will have not only my needs met, but I'll have something extra to give to those that are truly in need. And that's how it works. So we're to put this on. This is what we're to do. As a new man, you start to work with your hands. You use your hands to work. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Woo, this is a tough one. Come on. Lord, help me to don't let anything corrupt come out of my mouth. Well, it won't come out of your mouth if it ain't in your heart. But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if there's something corrupt in your heart, it'll come out your mouth. If there's corruption in the heart, it'll come out of the mouth. If there's gossip in the heart, gossip will come out the mouth. If there's slander in the heart, slander will come out of the mouth. If there's evil speaking about people in your heart, it'll come out your mouth. If there's hate in your heart, it'll come out your mouth. Because whatever's most abundant in here is what we talk. If there's fear in your heart, it'll come out your mouth. If there's doubt in your heart, it'll come out your mouth. If there's unbelief in your heart, it'll come out of your mouth. So he says, do not let any... Huh, I'm telling you the bar is high. God's standards is holiness. The new man walks in righteousness and true holiness. And this is a picture of it. Don't lie. Don't steal. And don't talk evil. Don't have evil in your heart. And don't have evil coming out of your mouth. But let... Your mouth be that which is good to the use of edifying. We're supposed to make sure that our words are building up other people. I came today with one intention that was not to tear you down. That was to build you up. I'm here today to build up the body of Christ, not tear it down. I'm here to... Let me ask you this. Does what you say... Build up your family or does it tear it down? A wise woman builds her house. She don't go around with her mouth tearing her house down, tearing her children down, tearing her husband down. She builds up her family. But builds it on the holy word of God. Amen? As far as the church goes, we all are one big family. And you know what we're supposed to be doing? Building each other up in the Lord. We're not supposed to be, as a church family, tearing each other down. We're to put off every way that we're tearing each other down. And we're to put on building and edifying and encouraging each other in the Lord. Now, sometimes you've got to tear something down before you can build something. The prophets of old were called to pluck up, root out. Now, here's how I see it. Sometimes you can't plant something good until you uproot something bad. But that's the job of God, the Spirit, and His prophets. People want to know about prophets of today. Well, let me tell you what. Prophets don't tickle people's ears. Prophets will say it like it is. And they speak for God, the oracles of God. 
It's not a personal message from a person. It's a personal message from God. He will rebuke us. He will reprove us. He will correct us. And then he will instruct us in righteousness. He will pluck up. He will root out. He will tread down. And then he'll build up. That's how you know a true minister is not one that just tears up the garden and weeds it out and leaves it all tilled up and doesn't plant something in it. Something in the place of the weeds is the seed, the word of God. And then that's what begins to grow in our garden, which is our heart. There are some things, ways we have that are like weeds in our heart. And God has to get those weeds out. Get all, how many of you plant a garden and the first thing you do before you start planting is you prepare the soil? You don't go out there and just put down precious seed into a, 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 a field that's overrun with weeds. Because the weeds are going to choke it out. And prevent it from bringing forth the harvest of righteousness. Of fruit. The fruit of the Spirit. So sometimes God's got to get rid of stuff out of us before he can put the true word of God in us. Or he does it simultaneously. I've seen him at the same time. He's uprooting things. Let no corrupt communication come out of your heart, but that which is good for edifying. See, he's plucking up and he's putting down. He's taking out and he's putting in. Let him who did steal, steal no more. Pluck up. But let him rather work with his hands. He's putting it down. He's putting off and he's putting on. I like this. That it may minister grace to the hearers. Does my speech minister grace to my hearers? All of our words should be seasoned with grace. It's a seasoning We don't come forth with legalism. But the law of God is the law of God. God is holy. We've all broken the law though. You can hear the grace. But God has forgiven us. You'll hear the grace. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Whereby you are sealed... Say, I am sealed by the Holy Ghost until the day of redemption. So we don't want to gri uh, grieve the one that seals us, do we? You know what kind of things grieve the Holy Ghost? You know why I inserted that? Because lying grieves the Holy Ghost. Stealing grieves the Holy Ghost. Corrupt communication out of our mouth grieves the Holy Ghost. Those things grieve the Holy Ghost. And we're not supposed to be grieving the one who seals us until the day of redemption. Now watch this. This word was very good for me and Dennis. Me and him had to read this scripture often. And we did. And then we put it into practice. Because sometimes in a marriage you have fights. Every marriage has troubles. But we would read this. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor. And I looked up the word clamor because I wasn't exactly sure what clamor meant. Clamor means shouting loudly and demanding something in a loud, noisy, or angry way. All right now, anybody hear that? I'm going to read it one more time. I said, Lord, what does clamor mean? He said, I want you to look that up and tell them what it means. Let all, we're putting off. Put off bitterness. Put off wrath. Put off anger. And I'll say this, he's already told us we could be angry but sin not. So it's uncontrolled anger. And clamor, stop Shouting loudly and demanding something in a loud, noisy, and angry way. 
Okay, I got to say what I got to say, but I don't need to be loud and noisy and angry when I say it. I need to get control of myself and say what I need to say, but without saying it in a loud, noisy, angry manner, demanding something. That's what clamor is. Huh, I didn't even know. I've been a Christian and even a Bible teacher, and I had to look up clamor. Okay, we got to put that off. And evil speaking. Evil speaking. Talking about people. Evil. Saying evil things. Put away from you. Put these things off. Put them away from you with all malice. You know what malice is? Ill will. I got an ill will towards you. I just got an ill will towards Sister Diana. I just got a wee ill will towards Sister Tony. I just got an ill will toward my mama. I just got an ill will toward my friend. God says put away your malice. Put away your ill will and your spite. Do you know some people like to do things out of spite? Malice also includes spite. I'm going to do this to spite you. See, those are things we did when we were the old man Things we cannot do when we put on the new man. You can't act like a child anymore. You got to grow up. I've got to grow up and you've got to grow up and we got to quit doing these things. This is a good word for our spiritual growth today. This is the word of the Lord for our growth today. And I thank him for it. And here's what we put on. Y'all ready? Put on this. Be kind one to another. Am I being kind? Be tender hearted. What is a tender heart? Tender. Be soft hearted. Don't be hard hearted and mean and hateful. Be tender hearted. Have a heart. Be kind. Be tender hearted. And forgive one another. You know how. A marriage survives, you forgive each other. You know the major, major reason for divorce? is because one or the other or both have hardened their hearts toward God and then each other. They're unwilling to forgive. And also, I'll say this, it's due to a lack of respect. That's why the Bible teaches that a woman is to respect her husband. And a husband is to love his wife as Christ loves the church. But a woman is to respect her husband. Re show him respect. And it's mutual. Just as much as you respect your husband, women, your husband should respect you. But when you lose respect for people, the relationship goes to pot. I'm going to tell you what happens. That's the number one thing. We don't have respect for each other anymore. We don't have enough respect for each other in this house. It's something that will slip away from you before you even know it. And we have to go back to respecting each other and showing respect and talking respectful toward one another. We do good at church. But how do we do at home? Well, you're stupid. Well, you're stupid. Do not revile when you revile. We're not supposed to be speaking evil and reviling each other. These are things that we used to do. But as born-again Christians, we're not to do that anymore. We're to grow up spiritually and treat each other with regard and respect. I don't agree with everything you agree with. You don't agree with everything I agree with. We don't agree on a lot of things, but I love and respect you anyway. Don't think that you can treat people badly just because they're not just like you. There's a, Jesus treated people with love and respect that were nothing like him. Are y'all hearing me? It don't mean we're not supposed to expose the deeds of darkness. We are. But we're still supposed to love and show respect to all men. 
The Bible says show respect to all men. And sometimes people, as, as people of God, we're not doing that. We pick who we want to show respect to and regard to, and then we pick who we're not going to show respect to or regard to. But God's Word says that we're to forgive one another here, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. That's how our forgiveness is to be. To forgive like God forgave me and you for Christ's sake. Christ paid the price. And God forgave us, not because of us. You and I are not forgiven today because God thinks we did something great. He says, my son did something great. And it's because of him that you're forgiven, not because of anything you've done. But we're to forgive other people the same way God has forgiven us for Christ's sake. In other words, I forgive you for Christ's sake. Amen? That there may be no division in the body of Christ. Is that getting through? I'm not to have any kind of ought against you. This is our church family. And there's not supposed to be division, discord, or disunity. We are all to endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Do everything you can do for God's sake to keep unity. And when we abstain from speaking evil, when we abstain from gossiping, when we abstain from slander, when we abstain from lying to each other, that's going to promote the unity of the body. When we are kind to one another, when we forgive one another, come on. When we are tender-hearted toward each other, it's going to promote the unity of the body and keep us together. That's what forgiveness does. It keeps you together. I did wrong. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Those are words some people cannot say. Can't even say or admit that they've done anything wrong. And some people take responsibility falsely for things they didn't do to try to make peace. Don't do that because you're lying just the same. I said, Lord, if I need to, I'll just admit that I did wrong. And the Lord said, you would be a liar if you did. And that was in one particular case. <laughs> just one particular case. I said, in order to smooth things over, I'll just say, I did, I did it. It's my fault. The Lord said, you'd be a liar then. You cannot take blame for stuff you did not do in order to smooth things over. Am I making sense today? We're to forgive. You can forgive someone before they ever ask you for forgiveness too and free yourself. But also... Examine yourself to make sure that you take responsibility for your wrongdoing in the matter and repent as well. See, sometimes we want to say, God, it was his fault. He made me do it. He made me mad. He made me lose my temper. And God said, he didn't do any of that. You did it. You lost your temper. You did it. See, we want to say, it's the Adam nature. Adam did eat when God told him not to. And what did Adam say when God came in the garden? Adam, Adam, wherefore art thou, Adam? Adam's hiding because now he's sinned against God. He's hiding. When you sin against God, you hide. Some people do. That's what the flesh does. We should run to the throne room and seek for mercy and forgiveness and grace. But a lot of times they hit. The nature is to hide. The fleshly nature is to hide. And he said, um, I was naked. He said, how you know you was naked? How did you know you was naked? Did you do what I told you not to do? Did you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that I told you not to partake of? 
And he, this is, was Adam's reply. Now, this is what our flesh is like. God, it was that woman that you gave me. Who did he point to? Who did he blame? That woman that you, he blamed her and God and did not take responsibility for his partaking of the fruit of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. That God had told him, don't eat of it, for in the day that you do eat, you will die. What he should have said is, yes, Lord, I did, and I'm sorry. I shouldn't have. Please forgive me. I repent. I am sorry. But that nature of Adam that we live in, the fleshly body, does not want to admit any wrongdoing. These are the things we're to put off and put on. I'm going to go down a list real quick. If you've got a pen and paper, maybe you can jot these down. The Bible is so full of put off, put on, that I can even give you the scriptures, but for the sake of time, I'd like to just state what the description of what we put off and put on is. Put off... Lack of love. Put on love. Put off judging. Put on God search me and know my heart. Put off bitterness and put on a tender heart and forgiveness. Now that's one of them we just read. Put off unforgiveness and put on forgiveness. Put off selfishness. And put on self-denial. Put off pride. And put on humility. Put off boasting. And being conceited. And put on esteeming others higher than yourself. Put off stubbornness and put on a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Put off disrespect for authority and put on honoring authority. Put off rebellion and put on submission. Put off disobedience and put on obedience. Put off ungratefulness and put on gratefulness. Put off covetousness, covetousness, that's hard to say, and put on contentment. Put off murmuring and grumbling and complaining and put on your praise. Put off irritation of others. And put on preferring others in love. Put off jealousy. And put on trust. Put off strife and contention and arguing. And put on peace. Put off retaliation and getting even. And put on returning good for evil. Put off losing your temper and put on self-control. Put off uncontrolled anger. And likewise, put on self-control. Put off wrath and put on a soft answer. Put off being easily irritated. And put on not being easily provoked. Put off hatred and put on love. Put off gossip and put on edifying speech. Put off evil speaking and put on 
a good report. Put off a critical spirit. You know, there's a lot of people that have a critical spirit. They criticize everything and everybody. Criticize. Put off a critical spirit and put on kindness. Put off lying and put off and put on speaking the truth in love. Put off profanity. That's cursing. You're not supposed to be cursing. And put on pure speech, holy speech. Put off idle words. The Bible says we will give an account to God for every idle word that comes out of our mouth in the day of judgment. Every idle word. By your words you shall be justified or by your words you shall be condemned. That's serious, isn't it? So put off idle words. Don't just be talking to be talking and be heard. Think about what you say before you say it. Put off idle words and keep a bridle. Put on a bridled tongue like a horse. A bridled tongue. Control your tongue. Woo, this is a good word today. I am eating it up. I don't know about y'all. I don't know what you're doing with it. But right now I'm asking God to fix me in all these areas and make me the new man that I'm supposed to be, like Christ. Put off evil thoughts and put on pure thoughts. Even our thoughts are revealed before God. God knows what you're thinking. And when you find yourself thinking evil, put it off. No, I'm not going to think like that no more. No, I'm going to put on some pure thoughts. I'm going to think good and not evil. Put off complacency. Stop being complacent and put on zeal. Zeal means have some fervent love for God and others. Put off laziness. La I'm lazy. Well, that's a fruit of the flesh. There's nothing wrong with rest. The Bible says we should all get our proper rest, but it does not permission us to be lazy. Put off laziness and put on diligence. Be diligent, vigilant, prayerful, serving the Lord. Hallelujah, serving the Lord. Don't be lazy and not serving. Put off slothfulness, goes along with laziness, being slothful. And put on wholeheartedness. Put your whole heart into whatever you do and don't do it slothfully like you hate what you do. You know, there's nothing worse than watching a person work that hates what they do. If you hate what you do, you need to find you a different job. That's what I, I came to a place where I seemed to hate my job one time. And the Lord said, when you get to that place, you better go find you something else if I'm still not in it. Now, sometimes God will put you in that to grow you up. And don't let your flesh talk you into leaving some place you need to be. You see what I'm saying? See, people will say, well, I don't like my job, so I'm quitting. But there may be a time you need to move on. Amen. God moves us. There's seasons for everything, and that's okay. When your season changes, you got to move with it. When my season changes, when God changes my season, then I need to move with it. When God changes your season, you need to move with it, but you need to make sure it's God. Amen? So put wholeheartedness in. Okay. Put off hypocrisy and put on sincerity. Put off idolatry and put on the worship of God only. Put off leaving your first love and put on fervent devotion to God. Put off a lack of rejoicing and put on rejoicing. Put off worry and fear and put on trusting in God. Put off unbelief and put on faith. I'm going to say that one again. Put off unbelief. And put on faith. Put off unfaithfulness. And put on faithfulness. 
put off neglecting Bible study and put on Bible studying and meditation. The Bible says, study the word to show yourself approved to God. We are supposed to be studying our Bibles and not just reading. People say, well, I read my Bible today. Did you study it? There's a difference in reading and studying. I can read anything, but to study it means I study it out. Put off prayerlessness. Stop not praying. And put on prayer. Pray. Put, on, put off not having a burden for the lost. And put on compassion and witnessing. Put off burying your talents in the dirt. And start developing your abilities and your gifts and your talents for God and for the glory of God. Put off being irresponsible and put on responsibility. Start being a responsible person. Put off procrastination. Stop procrastinating. That means putting off things you need to do today until tomorrow. Well, I need to clean that closet out, but I'll put it off to tomorrow. Tomorrow comes, well, I need to clean that closet, but I'll put it off to tomorrow. Procrastinating. Put off procrastination and again, Put on diligence. Put off irreverence in church. And put on reverence for God, his house, and others. Now the Bible says we all ought to know how to behave ourselves in the house of God. That's where that scripture comes from. So there should be no irreverence in the house of God. Put off being inhospitable. What does that mean? Be hospitable. Sounds like hospital. Be hospitable would involve showing hospitality. When somebody comes to your house, you show them hospitality, right? You say, hi, come in, have a seat. Could I get you a drink of water? Just being hospitable is the difference in the old man and the new man. All right, put off cheating. And put on honesty. Put off stealing. And put on working and giving. Put off a lack of moderation. And put on temperance. Okay, this one's going to get us. Put off gluttony. And put on discipline and self-control at the dinner table. <laughs> we should have waited till after Thanksgiving to have said that one. <laughs> but the Bible teaches us not to be gluttonous. Put off the wrong friends and put on some godly friends. Find you some godly friends. It don't mean you've got to do your old friends wrong. It don't mean you've got to uh, be bad towards sinners. Jesus loves sinners. He went and ate with Zacchaeus, and Zacchaeus was a sinner, but he influenced Zacchaeus so much that Zacchaeus got saved. God doesn't say for us to neglect people and not be kind. But your friends need to be godly. You need some godly friends. Because the company you keep, you shall partake. You need some godly friends. Temp put off temporal values and put on eternal values. Put off the love of money and greed. And put on loving God and loving others. Put off stinginess. Oh, my goodness. Put off stinginess and put on generosity. Be generous. Don't be stingy. I'm just stingy. Put off moral impurity and put on moral purity. Put off fornication and put on some abstinence. Abstain from sexual immorality, all of it. Put off lust lusting in your flesh, and put on a pure desire. Put off adultery and put on marital fidelity. Put off homosexuality, incest, and the such, and put on some moral purity. Put off pornography 
and put on pure thoughts. Put off immodest dress. Put on modesty and modest attire. Put off flirtation and put on a gentle, quiet spirit. Put off worldly entertainment. Worldly entertainment and put on spiritual pursuits. Put off fleshly music and put on worship. Put off bodily harm and put on glorifying God with your body and in your body. Put off alcoholism and put on soberness. Put off following the crowd and follow God. And I have one, two, three, four more. Put off witchcraft, astrology, horoscopes, and the such. And put on worship of God and God alone. Put off gambling and put on good stewardship. Put off preferential treatment. And put on loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Showing respecter of persons is something God hates. He said if somebody comes into your assembly and they're well dressed and they're driving a nice car and they're richly clad and they've got money and all that and you show them more respect and regard than you do a poor man who comes in poorly clad, that's respecter of persons and God hates it. He said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And it doesn't say examine how much money he has or prestige or title or anything else. We're to love each other as God has loved us. Amen. He loves us unconditionally. And the last one, put off presumption of the future. The Bible says it's evil to say we're going to do this and that next week. And it said, trust God's will and seek for God's will. And remember this at the end, I'm going to say this. With God, there is forgiveness for all sin, except blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. There is only one unpardonable sin. Jesus said, you could curse me and be forgiven. You could curse God and be forgiven. But if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, you'll never be forgiven in this life nor in the life to come. And in the story, Jesus was casting out devils, dumb and blind spirits out of a man. And the religious leaders claimed... And accused out loud that Jesus was casting out the devils by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. When they knew in their heart he wasn't doing that by the devil. And that is blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. When you accuse what is of God to be of the devil, you better beware. Some people say, well, I just think he's of the devil. Beware. We need to just be quiet till we know. Amen. And then don't even talk about it. We got to be careful. It doesn't mean we don't expose things that are wrong. But see, that wasn't wrong. Jesus was casting out a deaf and a dumb spirit out of a man. And the man got set free. And he could see. And he could speak. And they stood over to the side saying, He's casting out those devils by Beelzebub. He's casting out those devils by the devil. They were claiming that Jesus was of the devil and his works were of the devil. And Jesus turns around and says, you can be forgiven of everything except blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Because he was doing it by the Holy Ghost. Jesus was doing it by the Holy Ghost. It was the Holy Ghost doing it. So be careful you don't mock the works of the Holy Ghost. 
And you're not going to. If you have any, any reverent fear of God whatsoever, you're not going to do that. Those Pharisees were not born again. They weren't born again. They just claimed. They were pretenders. They were hypocrites. You could do what they told you to do. You just couldn't do what they did. God wants us to do what he says do. And this is the principles of for spiritual growth, i.e., what to put off and what to put on. And this is going to be a daily practice. You're going to be at home, and you're going to remember when you get angry, I'm, I'm, I'm to put off uncontrolled anger, and I'm to practice d dealing with this situation in the proper way. Um, when you, The Bible says a woman... In her mouth should be the law of kindness. I'm not always there, and you're not. I know we're not. Sometimes we don't sound kind. Sometimes we're not being kind. We're being rude. We're being mean. We're being hateful. Sometimes we're just being pretenders. I'm telling you, God is calling us to come out and be all that he's called us to be. Amen? Put on that new man, which is renewed in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to stop right there. Thank y'all for just, y'all have been the best audience to speak to today. Y'all have just been like, you're just listening and soaking it up. And, and that's my prayer is that we're getting the word. Because it's what's going to help us to grow up and be the people that God is coming for. Amen. God's coming for a holy bride. And we're going. How many of you say, I'm going? You ain't got no doubt. I'm not being left here. Amen. I want to be ready if I die or if I go in the rapture. I want to be ready to see Jesus when he comes. Amen. That's what I'm living for. Life, there ain't nothing here that's worth living for. But living for our new home in heaven. And to see our loved ones. Hallelujah. We're going to have a good time in heaven, y'all. Praise the Lord. If you will, stand with me this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I thank you for this message that you've given today. It's your words, and your words are spirit, and they are life. And I pray that your words today bring each and every one of us healing and deliverance and breakthrough and godliness and holiness in every sense of the word, I pray that, God, you would create in all of us a clean heart. Give us that right spirit, the Holy Ghost within us. And Holy Spirit, help us each and every day to put off that old man, which is corrupt with deceitful lusts. And help us every day to put on the new man, which is renewed in Christ Jesus and enable us all to live a godly life, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. In Jesus' name we pray, and the church said, We hope you enjoyed today's Amen. message. To see more messages like this one, to support or interact with our outreach ministry, please visit our YouTube or Facebook page, Lighthouse Outreach Ministries. If you're in the area, come and visit us at 9437 West U.S. Highway 84 in Newton, Alabama. See you there.